That's Take, and today we're going to be talking about um, player draft prospects and whether or not we think they're going to be booms or busts. I'm Danny. I'm Andrew. All right, so um, the first was Deshaun Watson. What's your opinion on him? So I don't like his interceptions and his ball placement uh, outside is not great, so I'm going to move him over to busts. I think he should be a late first round pick, should not be considered for the number one overall pick. Great, great. I also don't like his inability to read NFL coverages as he showed on the college level with many interceptions, as Andrew noted. I'm also putting him in the bus category. Um, Mitch Trubisky. So I like Mitch Trubisky. He's a good athlete, um, but his he only started one year at UNC. So that's a little concerning for me. So for right now, I'm going to put him for bus because he hasn't proven enough for me. Not so fast. Week or so. So, um, I think Mr. Trubisky has all the intangibles and the skill level to be successful at the NFL level, so I'm going to put him as a boom. I don't mind that he only started for one year at UNC. There's a lot of players who have won and done C, specifically in basketball, but in football as well. Um, Deshaun Kaiser. So, I don't like any of the quarterbacks in this draft. I think none of them are top 15 picks, and I think only these three are first round picks. So, I like Kaiser. Again, got benched by Notre Dame. Uh, on a on a team that went four and eight, so I'm gonna move him to bust. Yeah. Yeah, he's terrible. Yeah. The Sean Kaiser for me is also is also a bust. Um, he's just Notre Dame, which has <laughs> gone awful team. this year. And if I were to rebuild an NFL team, I'm not looking for a college player who couldn't even win on the college level. All right, Leonard Fournette. So Leonard Fournette is the all, all you can all you want one in running back. He has the power, speed. He has the agility. It's underrated. He was injured a few times in LSU. But I still like him enough that I don't think he's a boom. Now, I've been concerned on Leonard Fournette for a long time. I, I loved him in his la last year what, until he played Alabama. And Alabama's NFL level defense really exposed him as someone who needs help around him. Also, I'm worried about his pass catching out of the backfield, but I still think he's just his raw talent and power and speed combo. Just, just, it's hard to root against him, so I'm going to go with boom. So next up, Jabiro Peppers started at Michigan. He was a really good player, good return man, and an all-around athlete, but I didn't see enough from him ball skills-wise, and I don't think he's big enough to play linebacker or skilled enough to play safety, so for that reason, he's a bust. Jabiro Peppers, I think he's he's good at everything, but he's not good enough at one thing on the NFL level, so I'm going to do that. Okay, Mike Williams, he's actually a wide receiver number two for me. We'll talk more about my wide receiver number one. But I like his size, his ability to just go up and get it. So for this reason, I think he's a good player. Honestly, I, I see Mike Williams. He has the potential to be a Calvin Johnson that just goes up and catches every ball. But I can also see him as more of a Brashad Perryman that makes concentration drops and just is very consistent. I, I'm just not that high and especially at the high rate that you're going to have to pay to get him. So I'm going to bust. So John Ross, he's all, I think he's going to be the fastest player at the Combine this year. Expect a 4.2 40-yard dash. But I think uh, when he played Alabama in the playoffs, uh, he, he got exposed. So I'm, I, I think against NFL-level talent, I don't see enough from uh, John Ross. To... I agree that against Alabama, he got exposed, especially with that fumble. Ball security is going to be a real issue at the next level, especially if he wants to be a punt returner and kick returner. But I just think his pure speed and ability to catch the ball will help him overcome. So even though I'm not going completely boom, I don't want to say bust for him. So and since he's not projected to be top 10 or anything, I think he's a good late value pick. Christian McCaffrey is actually one of my favorite players in this draft, although I am a Stanford fan. I think McCaffrey has the speed and the quickness. He's underrated as an athlete because he went to Stanford and is white. Um, but he's... he's a plus returner, he, he can do everything for you, can catch out of the backfield, so for that reason he's a boom. So, not to be racist, because he is white, a white running back, and well, I'm a white running back person too, but... Thank you. Well, I just, I, I just see that, um, I just don't see it in him. Once he, was, once he was made to carry the Stanford offense, like he was this year, once he lost all his weapons around him, he just, he was exposed as a average and best player, so a little bit so Malik Hooker, he's one of my favorite players in this draft. He's got great ball skills, came down with seven interceptions, I think three return for touchdowns. Um, he's an average tackler, which you need to be good if you want to play a strong safety. But I do think he's going to be a starting level free safety day one. I, I agree completely. I, I might have a little bit of bias because I'm an Ohio State fan, 
but just watching him play center field and running down the craziest balls. I remember against Bowling Green, the guy was running a fade down the sideline. He came, he came from the middle of the field and intercepted the ball. And that was just that was just when I was like, wow. And at first, I was really hoping he would come back to Ohio State, but now he's coming to the NFL. I'm hoping he can join my Ravens. But I think he'll be picked too high for that. So Corey Davis is actually my number one wide receiver at the moment. Uh, he started all four years at Western Michigan, and I think that's the only reason why he's not considered a top five prospect, because he went against uh, mid, uh, Mid-American Conference uh, uh, talent. But I, I love everything from him. He's got the speed, route running, everything is great. Blue player. Yeah, I love everything about Corey Davis as well. And I just see another guy who went to Western Michigan in him, Antonio Brown, except Corey Davis is taller. So he's got, Anto I think he has Antonio Brown's route running and quickness and catching with potentially the jump balls and deep threat of Calvin Johnson. I just, I hope, I hope our Ravens pick him. So Joe Mixon, a bit controversial. Um, he was suspended for the 2014 season, but he is a good enough player. I think he's uh, running back three at the moment, but that off the field stuff is just so concerning. Um, if I were an NFL front office, I would not pick him, but I do think he's a great player, so for that reason, I, I have to say boom. See, I want to say bust, just because of the off the field stuff, but when, when I watch Joe Mixon play, the thing that really, really excites me is explosive off the cut. Whenever you see him go through the hole, just burst through, no one can catch him. And that's just why I just see a success for him in the future. Dalvin Cook, I think, is Joe Mixon, but faster and stronger. Fumbles are an issue for uh, Cook, but I mean, his ability to just get around everyone and explode for 80-yard touchdowns, he's got to be a good player. So I'm going to go against the curve. I honestly don't like Dalvin Cook that much. I think he struggles in pass protection too much for, even though that is expected out of running backs, too much for me. And I feel that if, if he does not get the hole he needs, he's just too ineffective. Because he can he makes people miss, but not enough for me. Miles Garrett, number one overall player for me. Easy boom. He's got the speed, he's got the strength, he's got the size. And the length. I, and the length. I think he needs to develop another second move uh, coming around the edge. But other than that, uh, number one player in this draft, boom. I, I, I'm going to just have to agree with that. I don't agree with anything Andrew said, but, but I'm just worried that he's, he's the number one pick and the Browns. That just worries me, but you know, can't really take too much out of that. Okay, Jonathan Allen. I like him as a player, but I don't think he's going to be a great NFL player. At Alabama, uh, I think Saban can coach them a little above their ability, and the injuries to his shoulders are concerning for me, so for that reason, he's a bust. No. With Jonathan Allen, like, I will do a personal connection here because um, the high school we go to, TJ, uh, the year before my freshman year, I, I watched film of him destroying my friends on varsity uh, against us when we played Stone, when we played Stonebridge, and like, just like that connection to him, just watching him dominate so much and dominating Alabama. I really, especially when he was able to jump over that running back, that really showed the athleticism for me, and I didn't think that was just a freak play. So I'm going to go with the move. And last but not least, Derek Barnett, a good player. He did break Tennessee's all-time sack record, um, but I don't see enough from him. Uh, I don't see the, the speed to get around the edge consistently, so for that reason, I'm going to say bust. I just don't really like his lack of prototypical size as a D end or D tackle. I think he's just too in between, and he's just too slow and too weak for either position, so I'm just going to say he's a bust. Maybe he can find success as a 4-3 D end or 3-4 D tackle. That's probably where I see him playing, but I just wouldn't spend such a high pick on him. Alright, thanks guys. This is Sports Tats Take. Sign up.